The tin whistle, also called the penny whistle, is a six-hold woodwind instrument. The modern tin whistle is endemic to Great Britain and Ireland, where Robert Clark started producing them in Manchester in 1843. From what I found, the most common whistles are in the key of D, but C and E flat whistles are also used. Presently, most whistles are made of brass or nickel with plastic mouthpieces, though some are all wooden or metal. Low whistles are played too, which are larger and sound an octave lower. Covering and uncovering holes in different combinations produces notes, and much of the technique for Scottish traditional music lies in the ornamentation. My search for information about the tin whistle, particularly why people take it up and how they learn to play, began over a weekly breakfast with my friend Sassy. I noticed an Irish-made fey dog whistle on her desk, which she bought during a trip to Stonehaven. She told me about her friend, who has several whistles, and her own motivation for wanting to learn. She had two of them, I think. I was like, oh dear, they are really nice. I want to like have one to just like, I don't know, try it, play a little, teach myself a bit. Right. Mm -hmm. Like, it, I don't know. At home we have uh, um, recorders, I think two or three, because my mom plays recorder and flute. So I sometimes pick them up, so I was like, this is nice to have something of your own. They sold books with it to like learn or teach yourself, but I was like, no, I'm not going to buy that. Um, there is this thing called internet that will have it. How have you been learning anything about the tin whistle? Did you mention to me um, YouTube videos? Yeah, I watched YouTube videos and I don't know, I read a little. What kind of music were the YouTube videos teaching? Um, like most of it was like, yeah, Irish. Mm -hmm. After talking with Sassy, I decided to buy my own whistle and learn to play. A whole host of online sources were available with advice about which whistles are best for beginners and why, and I bought a Clark. Finding myself at something of a dead end with subjects to interview, I went to the Elphinstone Institute, where faculty members generously outpoured names and contact information for whistle players around Aberdeen. That took me to Helen Lynch, an English lecturer here at the university. Helen teaches whistle classes with the Scottish Culture and Traditions Association and plays in an all-female Cayley band called Dance Macabre. Her whistle playing started in 1988 for the amusement of her infant daughter and blossomed into an enjoyed enterprise. I'm Helen Lynch, I play the whistle and the baron. In terms of the sound, we have a kind of fiddle whistle, quite an even balance of Irishy, Scottishy mix, basically. And we just play roaring Scottish dance music with bits of Irish, bits of Polish, bits of Ukrainian, so that people can have a really nice dance party. I was living in York, I think, when I, I started playing the tin whistle, and then I lived in Poland for a while, so I played, I quite often played the whistle, but I also played, you know, uh, klezmer music and mm. gypsy music and other things. So yeah. by the time I arrived in Aberdeen in 1993, I probably had a very <laughs> mongrel, mongrel style of whistle playing. <laughs> but I think it's become more Scottish since then, due to the people that I've learned from and the people that I've played with, and the style of playing that I do, because I do Kayleigh, a lot of Kayleigh band. Kenny used to do the whistle class, and I attended some of those. And I had a couple of lessons, some lessons from Alec Green, who's a very well-known uh, whistle player in the Northeast, and Jude Pulland, who else? And I listened a lot to playing by by people like Sarah Reef, and you know, for the for the style, for the sort of Northeast style that I like. And um, I had some lessons from Malcolm Weevil, who's a flute player primarily, and tried to de-Irishify my style. <laughs> <laughs> Um, but yeah, it was just nice doing kind of collaborations with, with different people and learning from different people formally and informally. And the tunes that you learn from particular people, you tend to learn mm -hmm. in a particular way. Sometimes you sort of change them a bit and make them your own accidentally or on purpose, depending. <laughs> but yeah, you, you, yes, I, I guess it's just a sort of process of, of picking up. SCAD I teach, I've taught various levels of, of, of whistle, the beginners, the next one up, and we used, we had 0, 1, 2 and 3 at various points. So I think I've taught in most of those classes, and yeah, they sort of have 8 people, 10 people. And the, the, the ability range, you nearly always have people who uh, read music already, play another instrument already, and we've got a piper in the class at the moment. So people come with different sort of levels of experience and different um, expertise. I occasionally get my class to dance. So that, I mean, there are some things like Strath Bay that you can you can really understand once you've done Scottish, once you've done a dance that goes with it, you can really understand why it's got the rhythms in it that it's got, right. um, or even a march because if you or waltz, if you expect people to 
to dance to things. You have to be able to feel it because it's one of the key things that Scottish music is really for and you, right. can, you can hear it. You can hear it in the ornamentation, you can hear it in the in the style, in the phrasing and everything else. It's 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 bouncy, dancey music. I tend to send people to YouTube for particular versions of tunes when we're learning mm -hmm. them and often one of the things that the people in the class do is they go and do a bit of research and they find versions that they like. On the whole I, I make up my own materials and I, I sort of write things out and yeah I send people off to and when it when there are songs, I think it's usually a good idea for people to know what the song sounds like and also yeah. to know what the words are um, and what the story is. So, as well. but yeah, the main thing is that everybody has a really nice time. Helen invited me to join her whistle class Monday nights in the McRobert building with the SCNT. I showed up early and happened to meet Olivia Rusnovska, another first-time whistle student. I asked Olivia what made her decide to play the whistle. At the beginning I wanted to do piano or something, mm -hmm. but then I was in the Cayley, that was my first Cayley ever. And Helen, the teacher, was playing whistle there, and oh. the acoustics are really good, and the whistle was really loud, and it was really cool, so I decided to give it a try. Helen taught two tunes in the 90-minute class, the first in unison by rote and the second by assigning one of three parts to each student and coaching the three groups through the harmonies, separately then together. The class of 12 was relaxed and fun, though quite shy about being heard or recorded. The group was much more confident by the end of the class and seemed to come away with a greater interest in their pursuit. In thanks again to the Elphinstone Institute, I was able to contact Kenny Haddon and coordinate a meeting with him immediately after the whistle class. I rushed to meet Kenny in the cafe at McRobert to join him and his friend John for a live music session at the Blue Lamp. Kenny played the whistle in the wooden Simple System flute. There were two other flute players, guitars, fiddles, and sometimes vocals. The whistle could be heard over the top of the other instruments, and the blend was appealing. Kenny has taught for the SCNT since their founding some 19 years ago, presently instructing flute but whistle in the past. Helen Lynch took his class. He tutors some private students and coaches at festivals throughout Scotland and has since the mid-80s. Music has been his chief occupation for the last five years since finishing his job as a chemist. His YouTube channel, under the name Douglas Haddon, is dedicated to Scottish and Irish traditional music with a focus on flute and whistle. He has 244 videos with nearly 400,000 views. He described his involvement with traditional music as an obsession, and his knowledge and preservation of the music and history certainly classifies him as an authority on the subject. He said he teaches because he likes to meet other musicians and takes the opportunity to promote the whistle as an instrument in Scottish music. The whistle is a very well established instrument in Ireland, but not so, not so much in Scotland. Um, so I, I, I kind of self taught myself. I had to teach myself to play the whistle myself. I oh. went over to Ireland in uh, 1976 and I got a hold of this book, which is a tutor by a cultist called Tori Aaron. And I think they still, uh, they still produce it. Although they've maybe got a guy who's more up to date here. <laughs> so I mean, I bought that in 1976 uh, on my first trip to Ireland, and that did explain things about ornamentation. But there was nobody, there was certainly no classes. There was, there was certainly no, obviously no YouTube that you could get tutorials on. I very much try to teach respect for the tradition, um, which is kind of absent, I think, in Scotland at the moment. There's a lot of notes, uh, a lot of notes, but not much music. So I think the I think the, the old stuff is uh, a lot of it's being neglected these days. That's a shame. That's a shame. I don't, it, it shouldn't disappear. There's danger that it could, but uh, it's maybe one of the reasons why YouTube is such a good archive. There's no central archive in, apart from the School of Scottish Studies in Edinburgh, I suppose. Kenny played several tunes and taught me this one. Yeah, well, uh, It's interesting how these four whistle players at different levels of musical establishment are connected to each other. Kenny, the most experienced of the bunch, has been playing for over 40 years and teaching for 30. 
His avid involvement in traditional whistle and flute music has culminated in a considerable YouTube archive, recordings in the School of Scottish Studies, and countless students throughout the country. Helen, a professional whistler and English lecturer, has taken lessons from a number of people, including Kenny, and has developed her own style through collaborating with other musicians. She is passing her knowledge and influence onto the next generation of students through the SCT and her band. Olivia heard that band, Dance Macabre, playing at a Kaylee and decided to take up lessons because she loved Helen's sound. Meanwhile, Sassy, a budding whistle player, learns from home by accessing YouTube videos and online resources compiled by music preservationists like Kenny. And now I'm part of the network too.